Hey guys, it is April from Getting Hookah With It. Today I wanted to talk to you about reading slumps. Reading slumps affect everybody. It just happens and they seem to come out of nowhere and they suck because you and I love reading so much that when you get into a reading slump, it feels like you're never gonna find a good book ever again. Horrible. So I'm going to go through the books that I think would help you get out of a reading slump and get back into reading. So I think the first kind of reading slump that someone can get into is when you just can't get into a book. Like you have tried and tried again and you're, you just can't get past chapter three and it's driving you crazy and you're DNFing book after book after book and it just feels like crap. Uh, for those situations, I think you need a fast paced read. Something that you cannot put down, something that drives the plot forward. So these are the books that I'm going to suggest to you if you just need something fast paced. The first fast paced book that I think was awesome is Final Girls by Riley Sager. Wow, this was so much fun. This is a thriller and it's a fairly newly released thriller. It came out summer 2017. And this follows uh, a young girl named Quincy. And she is a final girl because she survived a mass massacre, essentially, at a cottage where she was hanging out with some friends. Um, and all of the friends died and she survived and she's not alone. So there are two other girls who have gone through similar situations and they're all final girls and they've all, um, created this kind of friendship where they look out for one another. One of the final girls is found dead and Quincy wants to know what in the world happened. The other thing that Quincy would like to know is what in the world happened on the day that all of her friends died because she's just blocked it out. You find out in this book, it is so much fun and it has so many twists and turns. This is an ode to the slasher flick and I just couldn't put this down. I could not put this down. I read this in just a couple of days. Um, and I think most of the people that I know who have read this have read this very quickly because it just draws you in. The next fast paced read that I think would be really great if you're going through a reading slump is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. This follows a woman who is rummaging around for something upstairs in the attic and she stumbles upon a letter from her husband and it says, um, if you read this, I am dead. And she doesn't know whether to open the letter or leave it alone because it's his private matters and she doesn't want to pry. But I mean, come on, what are you supposed to do in that situation? She opens the letter and when she opens the letter, everything changes in her life and not only her life but it affects the lives of other women in her little town as well. Now the reason that I think this is a good pick for someone who needs something fast-paced is that the every single chapter ends on a cliffhanger. Every single one and you always want to know what happens next. It, it just makes this such a fast paced read. Now I should mention that this is not a thriller. This is more of a contemporary with a little bit of a mystery in it. It's still really fun though. Finally, I'm going to suggest Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Now this is the most gritty thriller I have ever read in my entire life. I had a hard time reading this sometimes. This follows a woman whose husband dies in front of her. Um, it's very sudden and very upsetting to her. And she goes home and she is going through his computer and she stumbles upon something that makes her realize that she didn't know her husband one little bit at all. And it is perverse 
and gritty and very fast paced. You need to know what the hell happened in this storyline. I I want to read more Karen Slaughter. It's the only Karen Slaughter that I've ever read. But if you don't mind something a little bit grotesque, try it out. It's fun. So the second kind of reading slump that I personally get into is when nothing is connecting with me. I want to feel something. And every time I pick up a book, I don't care about the characters. I'm not feeling any sympathy towards anyone. Here are three books that are incredibly emotive. The first book is The Book Thief. Oh my gosh, so wonderful. So this follows a little girl named Liesl who lives in World War II Germany. And she is adjusting to this world uh, and yet still trying to have a childhood. Uh, and she kind of finds escape and meaning in reading um, and while she's doing that she's actually able to save a lot of other people from you know depression isolation and she, she's just able to save a lot of people not only herself through reading i ugly cried reading this book it's one of my favorite world war ii books i've ever read and i just love it you can't help but really connect with so many of these characters. It's not just Liesl who you're rooting for. You're rooting for her best friend Rudy, her adoptive father. You're rooting for her adopted mother. Just there's just so many characters that enter your life while you're reading this that you want only the best for and yet they're all in World War II Germany. So you don't know what's gonna happen. Oh it's wonderful. Go and read that if you haven't read it yet. It's a chunker, but it's it's so worth it. So worth it. The next very emotive read is A Monster Calls. And this follows a little boy whose mother is ill and just about that. Dealing with that, coming to terms with that, and how he pulls through. Um, you can most definitely read this in one sitting. I definitely read it in one sitting and I think this is a great book to get you out of reading slump because it's so short and you cry while reading it of course and I'm sure that this would pull you through a, a reading slump. Finally, another emotive book but nothing that will make you cry, it'll more make you cringe, is Tulip Fever. Now this is about a Danish woman who lives in Holland during the tulip fever when tulips are the, you know, hot commodity and shows how wealthy you are. And she is living with her very wealthy husband who is much older than her. She does not love him, but she is happy that she's with him because she's, he's given her safety and security in her life um, that otherwise wouldn't be there for her. And one day her husband decides that they should get their portrait done. And so he hires this young man, this young artist to come in and take their portrait. And the artist and the young wife fall in love and they want to be together. And how they do that is so disturbing. I felt like pulling my hair out at times reading this. And you know, it, 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 this is full of emotion because you can understand wanting to be with the guy that you love, um, but it's this time period and you don't have much choice because you're a woman in this time period. And yet the choices that she makes, I felt really angry about. So um, this makes you feel all sorts of stuff and I, I think it would be a good one to get you emotionally invested in a book. Um, so those are the three for emotional reads. The other dilemma I think can happen when you're reading is if you're just reading junky literature, I shouldn't say junky literature, if you're reading stuff that is not good writing. If it's just not good writing and you're kind of rolling your eyes at times and if you keep reading books like that over and over again, you can get into a reading slump because sometimes you need to read a book that reminds you of what 
good writing is and why reading is a privilege and how amazing it is. For the selection of well-written books I'm about to recommend you, just so you know, I didn't select books that are like beautiful writing, but will go on and on and on about a tree. Like these are beautifully written books, but it has a plot that's gonna keep you turning the pages. Uh, the first book that I think was beautifully written and such a hard hitting plot line is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood is Canadian and I just love her so much. And The Handmaid's Tale is a dystopian world where women don't have rights anymore and women who are fertile are being taken and used as handmaids to um, continue the population because infertility is on the rise. Most people are infertile and so you need these fertile women to keep the world population going. And it follows Offred, who is one of those women who is being used for her reproductive abilities. It's very disturbing, but beautifully written. Beautiful. Some of my favorite lines are in this book because just Margaret Atwood just packs a punch. And if you're a feminist and you haven't read this, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Go and read this. The next book I personally thought was gorgeously written is Every Heart a Doorway. Did anyone else when they were reading this just think that the writing was stunning? This is a fantasy book. I can't tell really whether this is YA or just straight up fantasy, but it follows a group of children who live at a boarding house and these children have gone to other worlds. So some of them have gone to Neverland, some of them have gone to Wonderland, and when they come back home, their parents just don't know what to do with them. Like, what do you do with a kid who's gone to those places? Um, and so they decide to send them to this boarding house who takes in all of these kids. And they're meant to like rehabilitate there essentially. And the storyline itself is fascinating, but the writing was on point. I actually was looking at the, the beginning of the book where it shows like what other works this author has done. She's written a ton of books. I had no idea. Uh, and I, I'm honestly quite amazed that she can have written so many books and written so amazingly beautiful. I personally thought it was stunning writing. So, and it's short. So perfect to get out of a reading slump. The final book uh, that I think a lot of people would suggest for reading slumps is Station Eleven. Station Eleven is another Canadian book and it is wonderful. It is dystopian literary fiction. It follows a world in which a plague has kind of taken out most people and the world is trying to build itself back together in its own way. So everyone is banding together and forming these different groups. And this follows a group of musicians and actors who go from like settlement to settlement and perform and bring the arts to people. It goes backwards and forwards in time from when the plague was just starting and then afterwards when they're obviously on the road. And I just thought this was wonderful. How these storylines link together, it was masterfully done. Um, and you are flipping the pages again because you wanna find out A, how did this plague spread? And B, how are these people going to survive meeting new people at every stop? And you don't know whether they're nice or whether they're going to try and kill you or what? Because that's what you're faced with in a dystopian kind of setting. I loved that book. So I hope that this helps you if you are in reading slump. Um, I hope it kind of gets you out of it. Reading slump sucks so bad. I hate them. Happy reading to you all and I'll see you next time. Bye!